this video, I delve into an intriguing topic, why did South Africa join BRICS? We will unravel the story behind South Africa's inclusion in this influential economic alliance and explore the connection between China's influence and South Africa's involvement. I will also discuss Russia a little bit. In 2011, the Dalai Lama, spiritual leader in exile of Tibet, was denied a visa to visit South Africa to attend the 8th birthday celebration of his fellow noble laureate, Archbishop Desmond Tutu in Cape Town. Why did South Africa refuse to allow Dalai Lama to enter South Africa? What does Dalai Lama visa revisa story has to do with South Africa and BRICS? Please stay with me and I will come back to this story later in this video and I will share my thoughts on BRICS at the end of this video and I'm sure you don't want to miss that. But first, let's understand what BRICS is all about. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, a group of emerging economies that came together in 2009 to form an alliance focused on promoting economic cooperation, development, and multilateralism. These nations represent a significant share of the global economy and have a shared vision of enhancing their collective influence on the world stage. Now, let's delve into the fascinating story behind South Africa's entry into BRICS and explore the factors that led to this pivotal decision. In 2011, South Africa found itself at the center of international attention when the Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of Tibet, was denied a visa to attend an event in the country. This incident shed light on the complexity of South Africa's relationship with China and raised questions about China's influence on its decision making. Many believe that China's pressure led to the visa revisa as it considers the Dalai Lama as a separatist figure. This incident stirred diplomatic tension and fueled discussion about South Africa's priority and the balance between human rights and geopolitical interests. China officially extended an invitation to South Africa to join BRICS, marking a significant turning point in South Africa's foreign policy and economic aspirations. China's invitation was possibly motivated by various factors which might include South Africa's strategic significance as the gateway to African continent. By including South Africa, BRICS gained access to the vast African market, strengthening its economic influence and geopolitical reach. Perhaps we can also consider the fact that South Africa is the only African country in the G20. This means they are possibly already established on the world stage economic discussions. China's economic tie with South Africa possibly played a pivotal role in the country's decision to join BRICS. China has become one of South Africa's largest trading partners, fostering significant bilateral trade and investment. Chinese companies have made substantial investment in South Africa across diverse sectors such as mining, manufacturing, telecommunication, and infrastructure development. These investments have contributed to job creation, economic growth, and the modernization of South Africa's industries. Joining BRICS has brought several benefits to South Africa, both economically and diplomatically. As a BRICS member, South Africa has gained access to enhanced trade relations, foreign investment, and platform for knowledge sharing among the member nations. Moreover, South Africa now has a stronger voice in global governance structures, representing not only Africa but also the developing world. Through BRICS, South Africa actively participates in discussions on key global issues, including climate change, economic development, development and geopolitical affairs. There's no doubt that Russia is possibly the most influential country in BRICS group after China. Historically, Russia also has connection with South Africa. During the era of apartheid in South Africa, the Soviet Union, of which Russia was a part, strongly opposed the racially discriminatory policies of the South African government. It was alleged that the Soviet Union provided support to the anti-apartheid movement, including the African National Congress and its armed wing. The support possibly ranges from political solidarity to military training, financing assistance, and supply of arms. Following the end of apartheid and the transition to democracy in South Africa, bilateral relations between the two countries evolved. South Africa and Russia have engaged in various areas of cooperation, including trade, investment, defense, and cultural exchanges. There have also been high-level visits between the two countries, and efforts have been made to strengthen diplomatic ties and exchange collaboration 
in, in different sectors. So from Russia's point of view, they possibly didn't have any objection to South Africa joining BRICS. As an African, I strongly prefer China's influence in Africa over that of the West. I understand that in the modern world, we are no longer dealing with colonization but neocolonization. However, China is actively involved in building infrastructure including hydropower station, airports, train and water projects. This is potentially preferable to the historical practices of stealing, looting, slavery and other atrocities committed by the Western imperialists. I am aware of the potential danger of African countries becoming indebted to China. However, I believe that if our leaders in Africa are smart, this should not be a problem. Debt itself is not necessarily a bad thing, but mismanagement can lead to issues. Instead of viewing China as a savior or a dominating force, we should see them as a partner within groups like BRICS, where every member has equal rights and can contribute to collective success. After all, the purpose of BRICS block is to collectively increase the economic growth of member countries. It's worth noting that there are reports of over 20 countries expressing interest in joining BRICS, which could potentially lead to the expansion of the group into BRICS Plus. The reason behind South Africa's decision to join BRICS isn't really what to unravel. We should be talking about South Africa's benefits from its membership. I have other videos in my BRICS playlist which you might be interested to watch next. On this channel, I mainly discuss infrastructure development, interview with entrepreneurs, travel and tourism and much more. Thanks for watching and God bless.